Let's talk about the geometry section for the math TSI. So the geometry section is something that requires a lot of formula knowledge. Um, there's a lot of geometry formulas for you to keep track of. The big ones though are gonna be your area and your perimeter formulas. So make sure you have those down. If you don't know those, it's gonna be really hard when you get to the geometry section of the TSI. Um, but one of the big things that the TSI likes to do is it likes to give you geometry questions that have some algebra mixed into them. So it's pretty straightforward if they tell you, oh, you have a rectangle with an area of 24 and the length is eight, and then you just have to find the width. It's a little bit more complicated when all of a sudden they're giving you X's in the middle of the whole equation. So let's look at one like that. So we have this question that says there are three X minus two trees planted in each row of a rectangular parcel of land. All right, so I'm gonna draw a picture of a rectangle because it told me there was a rectangle. That seems like it could be important information. Let's just pretend like that's a rectangle. Then it says there are a total of 24X minus 16 trees planted in the parcel. How many rows of trees are there in the parcel? So this question is a lot to break down. I'm gonna start with there are 3X minus two trees planted in each row of a rectangle. So if I'm thinking about a rectangle as having rows, I'm gonna label one side of it 3x minus two. And let's just say that like, oh, here's a row, and here's a row, and here's a row, and here's a row, and here's a row. And in each of those rows, we have 3x minus two trees. Okay, so I have some kind of rectangle with one side being 3x minus two. There are a total of 24x minus 16 trees planted in the parcel. So, that's kind of confusing because like how do we have x trees what does that mean so to help me reason through this question sometimes i take the x's out and try and make it a simpler question so let's say that there are three trees planted in each row and there are a total of 24 trees and we want to know how many rows of trees there are okay so let's say that there are three trees in this row, and 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 three trees in this row. How many of those rows do we need to get to 24 trees? Well, if we're adding up three over and over, three times what would give us 24, right? There's three in each row. Another way of thinking about this is that word each usually means multiplication in a math problem. So three X minus two times what is gonna give us 24x minus 16. So this is kind of a sneaky area question, right? How many rows of trees are there planted in the parcel? There's a total of 24x minus 16 trees. So we're talking about this whole entire space. Anytime you're talking about the amount of space that something takes up or the amount of space that something is filled by, that's an area question. So 3x minus 2 times what is 24x minus 16? Now, I don't expect you to know that off the top of your head, but you can come over and look at your answers and try and pick one that would make sense. right? I need to somehow to get from 3x to 24x and from negative 2 to negative 16. Well, I don't really want to try multiplying by 21x minus 18 or 21x minus 14. I'm going to start with the very easiest looking answer I can find, which is down here at the bottom d equals 8. That seems like it's not so bad to try and multiply by. So let's see what would happen if there were 8 rows of trees. So then my area would be my length, 3x minus 2, times my width, which is 8. If I'm multiplying these together, I would distribute. So 8 times 3x would be 24x. 8 times negative 2 would be negative 16 which is the area we were looking for. So our correct answer here would be eight. So the big thing here is recognizing that this is an area question. So anytime there's a question about, like it's usually a rectangle and it's something filling up that space. It's trees, it's soil, it's flowers, it's vegetables, whatever it is that's filling up that space, that's an area question. Or anytime you see something talking about like, rows and columns. That's usually an area question and it's length times width. And then using your answers to help you rather than trying to solve this the complicated way. All right, let's look at one more geometry question. And this one's actually gonna be kind of similar to what we just did, but 
also kind of different. So this one, number 13, the yard behind Cindy's house is rectangular in shape. So I'm going to draw a picture of a rectangle. It has a perimeter of 72 feet. So perimeter is 72. Important thing to remember here, perimeter is what you get when you add up all of the sides. So if we have the length and the width of this rectangle, then the other side would be length and the other side would be width. So the perimeter would be the length plus the length plus the width plus the width. And you also sometimes see this written as 2L plus 2W. But for right now, I'm just going to leave it this way so we don't have to worry about multiplication. Then it says, if the length of the yard, so the length of the yard is 18 feet longer than the width, what is the area of the yard? Okay, so I'm going to go back here. The length of the yard, so the length of the yard is 18 feet more than, longer than, the width. And we're asked to find the area. So area of a rectangle is length times width. So we have a lot of formulas going on here. We have our perimeter, we have that the length is 18 more than the width, and then we have our area formula. So this one's kind of hard to work by plugging in each answer because we don't have a good place to plug it into, right? Because we're looking for the area. Well, if we plug in answers for our area over here, we don't have information about the length or the width yet. So we're gonna have to do this the old fashioned way, the long way, and start over here at the beginning. So we know our perimeter is 72, and that's equal to all the sides added together. So the length plus the length plus the width plus the width. But then we also know that the length is 18 feet longer than the width, 18 plus the width. So we can replace the L's in this equation with 18 plus W. So 72 is equal to 18 plus W, that's one side of our rectangle, plus 18 plus W, that's another side, plus width plus width. So we have the length of our rectangle and the length of our rectangle and the width and the width. That's all four sides added together. Then if we were gonna solve this like an equation, we would have to put all of our variables together. So all of our W's. So we have one, two, three, four W's. And then we would put our constants together. 18 and 18 gives us positive 36 and then drop down the 72. Now we're ready to solve this. So we can subtract 36 from both sides. 72 minus 36 is 36 drop down 4w, and then divide by 4, which gives us 9 is equal to the width of the rectangle. So now I'm going to come back over here to my area formula, and I'm going to put 9 underneath the width. So the length times 9 is going to equal the area, which is what we're looking for. Well, that doesn't really help us yet because we also need to know the length to be, to be able to do anything. So let's come back over here to this long problem that we've been working on. We now know that the width is nine. So let's come back up here where we were talking about length at the beginning. We said the length is equal to 18 plus the width, which we now know is nine. So the length is equal to 18 plus nine, which would give us 27. So now we can take that piece, bring it over to our area formula, and now we can figure out our area. The area is equal to 27 times nine, which gives us 243. So both of the examples that we looked at today were really complicated geometry questions, but these are questions that people tend to see on that TSI, where you're given information about a rectangle and something about the perimeter or the area or the length or the width, and you have to work with those equations and rearrange them. So the best thing to do is just try and write out everything that you know and try and figure out things that make sense. So for example, if the length is 18 feet longer than the width, it feels weird for the whole entire area to be 36, right? That seems too small. So you can kind of guesstimate based on some of that, but this one was a little bit tricky. So that's the geometry section of the TSI. Remember, on those first 20 questions, there's only three geometry questions. 
Now on the second section, if you have to go into the diagnostic questions, there are still 12 geometry questions, so be prepared for that. But try and do your best on that first section so you don't have to get into those extra 12 geometry questions.